Hello there, this is Off the Press, where we bring you the major headlines from the National Dailies. And I am Amaka Okoye. With me in the studio this morning to analyze the headlines as so is social commentator, Dr. Femi Idowu Adig. Okay, Dr. Femi, thanks for coming. I hope I didn't murder your name. No, no, you didn't. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks Good morning. It's me. good to have you this morning. Uh, so, um, we have so four, five papers with us and we are starting with the punch newspaper and the headline uh, there says protests spread 125 arrested police guard embassies and mtn now underneath that is as displayed on your screen nigeria malawi issues travel alerts zambian radio bans south african songs and my sister-in-law was burnt alive during the attacks. That's a sad one, says the Nigerian. An airpiece offers to evacuate Nigerians. Buhari warns against reprisals. Uh, top of the paper, as displayed on your screen, is World Bank China tops Nigeria's creditors with $11.46 billion. You find that on page 25 of the Punch newspaper. And the court has ordered Okorocha his family assets for future. EFCC says that. And you find it also as displayed on your screen on page 9. IG Shons PSC releases constables uh, recruitment list. Please find that on page 11, especially those who have applied. And then Lagos electrician, pregnant wife, three children, and a guest found dead. You find that again on pages 4 and 5 of the Punch newspaper. NDDC Ambanda's uh, headquarters projects pays 300 million naira annual rent. Federal government says so. You find that on page 7 of the Punch newspaper. And here are some picture stories, uh, quite graphic, there of policemen and um, trying to hold a suspect from Novare uh, Mall. And to the far right, you also find some very uh, graphic pictures there. Uh, top down, rather, we find faction kicks as MC Olom, Olu, Oluomo, Oluomo, yeah? Oluomo, yeah. Oluomo emerges uh, a National Union of Road Transport Workers Chair. You find that on page five, and crowns not part of talks with Olubadon. Balogun says that on page 13. Johannesburg no longer safe for Nigerians. Attackers are well organized. The president of Nigerian Union in South Africa says so. Please find that on page three. And Lagos plans law on monthly sanitation and restriction. Again, on page six of the Punch newspaper, as displayed, and one killed as tanker exploded on Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Flood submerges 600 hectare rice farms in Ondo. There seem to be plenty of <coughs> not so good news here. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Idowu, which do you want to start with? Well, let's start with the, the, the xenophobia will not go away. Mm -hmm. So let's start from there. Uh, it's good development by the police coming out now to calm things down on the reprisal mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Because uh, we've discussed before that um, you demonstrating and burning properties, looting properties, you're actually hurting ourselves. We're hurting Nigerians because this, there's no South Africans who live like that in Nigeria to that extent. Mm -hmm. And those businesses is the Nigerians who work there. So we are almost rendering ourselves uh, jobless by doing that. But having said that, mm -hmm. it took our government over 48 hours to come out with some decisive decisions, mm -hmm. which is indeed uh, very unfortunate because if they had taken a decisive decision earlier as the news broke, maybe we wouldn't have had these reprisal actions. People would be confident and comfortable that the government is on top of his game. Mm -hmm. But as it as it's where well now, we should just we should say it has, yeah, something good is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, 125 arrested police say that. And then uh, this one of police guarding embassies, you know, so there's been conversation that why should we guard embassies uh, and even uh, protect them? What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's, it's, it's just back to what we just said. If the police are not there, they can destroy the property. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, people are emotional, people are really, it's a, it's a big uh, problem. So that could be a statement also for yeah. us as a nation to say, well, we're not buying we, into violence. Yeah. We're not going to solve exactly. uh, the problem with violence. Exa we'll and don't, don't, never mind, it's not South Africa who owns that property. Mm -hmm. It's a Nigerian property, either leased or rented by South Africa. Mm -hmm. So and you destroy, so yeah, so... 
So we are being civil, so yeah, to speak. We, yeah, we're, we're being civil, mm -hmm. but I guess we are reactive than being proactive. That's we should have avoided is. something that happened. But yeah. again, people were emotional. I mean, nothing justifies that. Yes, yeah. nothing justifies that. And I quite agree with you saying, you know, when we do this, we're hurting ourselves. Yeah. Uh, but we, we only hope and pray that our government will be able to come out clearly, uh, hoping that there won't be further cases. But in situations like this, our government should be able to make a, sta you know, a stance, take a position yeah, and say, yeah. we not just we condemn this in plain terms, that's a rhetoric, but what's the concrete thing you're doing? Yeah. But thankfully, if you ask me, I would say one of the concrete thing is boycotting the World Economic Forum that is supposed to be uh, holding in South Africa. And thanks to our brother nation, Rwanda and Zambia also, they've said, uh, I mean, they've pulled out saying they won't, uh, be attended. Now, there is this one. Um, Malawi issues travel alerts. Zambia Radio bans South African songs. Yeah, what do you think? Those, those are decisive decisions taken already by those countries. Mm -hmm. It's not that we're on top of it, it's enough, it's enough, we're doing something about it. The people... We're engaging relevant authorities. Yeah, but the people of those countries now, the Zambians, they will be like, yes, our government is doing something. Banning South, um, South African music on the radio. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a. I was listening on the radio. MTN shares dropped. Yeah. We you understand? So, story. yeah, we need to do things. It's just things like that. We should go to economic warfare, not physical, burning houses, injuring one. Some, a man, somebody lost his life in Lagos two mm -hmm. days ago because of this. Uh, Mm. Looting, so. Go for economic warfare, I agree. Yeah. And then this uh, court has ordered Okoracha and Family uh, Assets for Future, EFCC. Well. Do you think that will happen? Well, we don't know where news like this in Nigeria, uh, it depends on where you are on the side of the politics. Are you on the opposition or are you on the ruling party? Now, we don't know what Okoracha has done, or it might just be another facade to believe EFCC is actually climbing down on. Uh, fraud or mm -hmm. corruption suspects, I mean, the, and then it, it goes away, mm. and we hear nothing about it anymore. So, I know hopefully, uh, they would we'll see the end of that matter. And then, gas projects originally my idea, not P and ID. Yeah. That's it. Then, Juma saying that on page 14. You know, this thing has gone on and on, and um, we're on the verge of losing. Um, a huge amount of money in our nation and you know each time we have this conversation it just doesn't sink in so to speak because we have not talked about the implication of this to ordinary nigerians okay. you know so what are your thoughts on this if we go ahead to okay. pay this hopefully we don't no, we're, i don't think we're going to pay this uh, the government is woken up now uh, it's sad it's taking them time to wait it's taking this uh, court judgment mm -hmm. for us to wake up on these p and ids saga but uh, i've said it before this saga we go on uh, we go down as one of the greatest scam that happened or would have happened to this country i read that story mm -hmm. what um, the elder statesman danjuma said was that it was his original plan he was his company was actually bidding for the gas gas project before he found out that the michael queen who is mm -hmm. supposed to be the found the md ceo of uh, pnid mm -hmm. His consultant at the time, too, was bidding. And then the $40 million that P and ID has claimed they invested in Nigeria was actually T. White and Juma hmm. because they were using his office and he was promised shares in the, if the business goes ahead. And then he didn't hear anything from them afterwards. So because the government is, hammer, is going down hard on it now, we're still yet, we're going to hear more stories. Mm -hmm. So many things we imagine. Yeah, it's really going to be very interesting hmm. to see uh, what's going to come out of this because Nigerian government and their cronies in the past mm -hmm. have really deprived an average Nigerians of basic amenities hmm. with such projects. We saw in Lagos in the last four years, mm -hmm. I, do, I don't want to mention any more of the company, they came and they were already in Nigeria before they were registered in the UK. Even we heard that this and ID were already bidding before they got incorporated. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and the man, Michael Quinn, has been said in some quarters that he's lived in Nigeria for so long. Mm, so why right. are you saying he's a foreign company? He's not any foreign investment. Mm. So we, 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 we we'll see how that uh, yeah. pans out.
And so that's it for the Punch newspaper. And I have here with me the nation. And again, uh, what is here is 9.6 billion judgment reports exposes P and ID then Juman Sleek, uh, which is what you just explained yeah. now. And then we have policemen, soldiers behind banditry. Yeah. You find that uh, on page eight, bandits tell governor. Wow. And then family of seven and two others die in Lagos. Uh, neighbors seek probe. Please find this uh, news on page five as displayed on your screen. And how Ibadan Obas bowed to Ulubadon. That's on page, page nine. Indigenous uh, broker pays. And then Nigeria draws red line with South Africa over killings. Here is the picture of shop rights. There was a lot of um, breaking and looting around, you know, when this happened. Like we've talked uh, about yeah. it, that violence is not the best way to yeah. handle uh, violence. And then again, it's the same news. 125 protesters held nationwide one shot as police repel attack on shop rights in Abuja. Yeah. Apparently, it's escalating to other parts of the it's country. It's gone to Kano. It's gone to Kano. Yeah. Yesterday. Uh, that, that's, that's not good because that is one hell of a very volatile area. We hope that uh, things will be curtailed quickly. And uh, we have some Olu vows to deal with troublemakers. 205 million lost to hoodlums as shop owners count losses. Tiwa Savage, Burner Boy, Basket Mall, Sean, South Africa, Labour experts, back government. Yeah, so what are your thoughts? Well, we've talked about. The yes. xenophobia, we talk about We're going the, to allow it to rest, so to speak. <laughs> so to speak. Um, on the policemen and soldiers behind banditry. Banditry, yeah, that's the government. Yeah. Thing, so. It's coming out. And then if you, what happened yesterday, even in Katsina State, mm -hmm. the home state of our president, mm -hmm. is really, really appalling. The youths took to the street and burnt down the SSG's mm -hmm. residence. Sure. And they burned out APC's uh, mm. sectariat in one of the local government. It just tells us that we've been sitting on a keg of gunpowder. It's just taking a spark from this xenophobia, and we're seeing reprisal from Lagos. It's going to Ibadan, from Ibadan. It's going to Oshun, from Oshun now. Mm -hmm. We're in Abuja, Abuja is going to Kano. So the government needs to do something very concrete mm -hmm. on time. We cannot play around it mm -hmm. before the whole country becomes engulfed in crisis. We cannot play around it. You yeah. see, the thing is, uh, over time, we've seen that our government responds, but maybe just the timing of the response is what we need to improve on. Because um, when certain things happen, it looks like we're watching. And then we just wake up suddenly and say, oh, we need to do something. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I beg your pardon. I, I think the right uh, addition to what you've just said is that we're able to take the right action in the right time. Also. Yeah, we should be proactive and not reactive. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Uh, so at the back of the nation newspaper, it's a, a column, a columnist, Olatunji there, saying reality bites. And it talks about the first 100 days illusion. Please grab a copy of the nation newspaper and find out what this is about. And then hardball, South African nobility died with Mandela question. Uh, some mm. people were saying, uh, you know, the whole, with all of these things happening, it seems like the whole idea of Ubuntu and Pan-Africanism is gone. Because if we are brothers, you know, in terms of African nations, why should an African raise, you know, his hand or her hand against another Africa? So it questions, it brings to question the whole idea of African, you know, Pan-Africanism. So I just, that came to my mind with this nobility yeah. died with Mandela. Yeah, yeah. Should we agree? Is that what it looks like? What are your thoughts? Well, it looks like that, but the main problem or the main issue is that the, the political class mm -hmm. in South Africa, I actually, I strongly feel they're behind this because I, I listened to someone yesterday who said this xenophobia started in 2007. Mm -hmm. And this is, that's 12 years down the down line. Down the line. And we're still dealing with it. Mm -hmm. So is he going to live with her for the rest of our life? Or are we supposed to take decisive decisions and say no to this? Because the politicians in South Africa and the white dominated uh, areas, mm. they are the ones controlling 85% of the economy. That's correct. And they make uh, the black South Africans believe foreigners or other Africans are taking their job. Mm. So that is the narrative that has been sold to them. That's why, that's, that, this is the offshoot. And that's quite unfortunate if you ask me. So we move on to this day uh, newspaper. All the newspapers uh, have basically the same thing. So uh, 9.6 billion uh, 
dollars judgment that how P and ID promoters swindled Danjuma. So the story of Danjuma is really come to light now. And thankfully, this is giving an opportunity to hear different sides of the story. Please find that. It's huge. On, it is huge. It's yeah. huge money, so it's not going to go. Just like that. It's not going to be swept under the carpet. So that's on the first page, and you'll find it continued on page eight of this day. A newspaper as displayed on your screen. I in Asian markets and as NNPC's Duke Oil relocates to Dubai. Find that on page 10, FG deploys tax credits for private firms to boost infrastructure, and that's on page 12. A new offensive, Nigeria shuns economic forum in South Africa, recalls envoy. I think that's a statement. Yes, that's a good that's, beginning. It's, it's, it's a good way. Mm -hmm. And then Buhari retaliations amount to doing the same thing we yeah. condemn, we agree. Yeah. Oshibajo heads for another event in Ghana and police arrest 125 over reprisal, beef up security around foreign embassies and businesses. I think it's also a statement to say, you know what, we would not go, we won't go as low as uh, becoming uh, violent. And then bandits give, uh, give Masari condition for dialogue in Kasina. And then strategizing against uh, xenophobia. We have here in the picture President Muhammad Buhari, the Vice President, and then uh, the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyama during a strategy meeting uh, on uh, xenophobia, xenophobic attacks in South Africa in Abuja yesterday. So maybe that's what they mean by the re engaging with relevant uh, bodies. Yeah. We hope to see results. Um, is there something else that stands out, really? All of these are... They are, they are mostly, what we've talked about. Mostly what we've talked about. The nation is actually in, in, ha in harmony, sharing the same thoughts, yeah. so to speak. The country is... Uh, we are all plagued, uh, um, plagued with what is going on. So please grab a copy of this day newspaper, uh, newspaper and find all of this conversation. And then the back of news, uh, this day newspaper is yet another columnist, Olu Shegun Adeniyi, who says, Yar Adua and the 9.6 billion question. Uh, please find this on the back page of this day and find out what Olu Shagun is talking about here as we move on to the Vanguard newspaper. Again, this says um, on the front page of the Vanguard attacks, we are drawing red line against South Africa. The federal government says that. And this story, you find it on page five as displayed on your screen there. And the uh, envoy to South Africa recalled. MTN shorts offices nationwide as shares drop and then boycott World Economic Forum in Cape Town as Nigerians to avoid going to South Africa. Outrage protests continue in Nigeria as police foil attacks on MTN shop right offices amongst others. And then uh, that's the Nigerian Association, I think the Association of Nigerian Students gives South African firm 24 hours to shut down, five days to leave Nigeria. What do you think? Well, it's still emotional. Yeah, still emotional. you can tell them to shut down, to avoid any wreckage, or but to leave South, to leave Nigeria. Do we want know. them to leave? No, not that, that the we want to... them. Do they? Do we want them to leave? Do they want to leave? They're doing business here, mm. so it's it's it's, it's a diplomatic uh, approach that Nigeria needs to. Go to. We can't go out and just say leave. No, South Africans that are they are the ones attacking the xenophobic thing is in the minority, not in the majority. Mm. So we need to look at that as well. We what? can't just issue statements and say, leave Nigeria in five days. Mm -hmm. No, we don't do that. OK. One of the things that um, I was reading uh, up something from a foreign uh, newspaper, and you know, much as we know Nigerians were targeted, mostly, so to speak, other African nations have also come out to say, you know, we've lost our brothers, Kenyans, for instance. There was a statement from there yesterday saying, oh, there were so many Kenyans that were killed in yeah. this. So it, it is a shame and it is sad, really, that uh, this is happening and we hope uh, somewhere we'll find uh, healing and peace to move on as a nation, as a people. Uh, again, here we have Tiwa Savage uh, boycott. Tiwa Savage to boycott DSTV Festival in South Africa himself and uh, Bonner Boy. Uh, for them, that's a statement. And uh, Waste Challenge, LASG to reintroduce monthly sanitation exercise. What happened? I used to have a memory of this sanitation. Does it still hold, by the way, in yeah. some quarters? Yeah, we normally, I think it started about 1983 or 84. Mm, way back. When we have, yeah, when we have the last Saturday of the month all over the country. Mm -hmm. 
for three hours sanitation between seven and ten. And then the last administration, after the military era, during the civilian rule, a lot of um, states left that process. Mm -hmm. And Lagos still held on to it until 20, I think 2015, 2016, the last administration, it came in. Yeah, there are some arguments around it that sanitation shouldn't just be one day mm -hmm. uh, of the month, and then you can shut down the economy for three hours. Uh, Trying every, to clean up. Yes, yeah, so we should, we should have the culture of cleaning up, our uh, managing our waste on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the truth is... I mean, you're an, you're an expert in, in yeah, this that, that, area. That, that, yes. So I'm sure yeah. you're excited, so to yeah, speak. I'm excited because um, people's culture has to change. Mm -hmm. And because there are no punitive measures for uh, people who hear when it comes to proper waste management, mm. proper sanitation, we have not done well too well. But in reintroducing it mm -hmm. for a certain period of time, or because I read that story, I found that the Lagos State Commission of Environment mm. actually had discussions with the markets, women leaders and all that to for the reintroduction that mm -hmm. the law is going to be passed because the last administration actually repeated the law of uh, sanitation in Lagos State. It was rewritten, a, a lot of things was done and it jeopardized the cleanliness and the waste management procedures mm -hmm. in Lagos. So I guess this new government is coming back because you need the people. Yeah, you correct. need to engage the people. Mm -hmm. the so when you engage the people, because they're the major stakeholders, mm. they're the ones who generate this waste, waste, and they don't want to live with it. Mm. So it has to be disposed. So you have to create an enabling environment. You have to create the right structures, mm -hmm. not just business. The right structures have to be in place before the business, which is where I feel the last administration got it wrong. Mm. They place the business first before the stakeholders and the structure. Hmm. So the, there must be something about our mindset, a culture yeah. of cleanliness. Yeah. And I, I've seen also in the news that uh, the governor has, as, as he talked about um, collaborating with stakeholders, that he's reached out to Africa Cleanup Initiative, asking for volunteers for some sort of uh, yes. cleaning activity. That's great. Uh, so here, um, again, we see the same news. Saudi's governor's on offensive inaugurate Joint Security Committee Please find that on page 34 of the Vanguard newspaper. Controver controversy over NNPC subsidiary Duke Oil operations in London. That's you find on page 9. And angry protesters set ablaze SSG's uh, house, APC Secretariat in Casina, yeah. which we've already talked about. Yeah. Please get that um, on page 13, as displayed on your screen there, of the Vanguard newspaper. And again, up there is a tragic story. Man, pregnant wife and three children and relative die in Lagos after jollof rice meal. We don't know what that is, could be food poisoning, but please find out what it is on the Vanguard newspaper on page uh, six. And then at the back of the newspaper, it sports. Uh, EFCC begins a fresh probe of NFF finances. Yeah. Uh, we read that in the news this morning, and um, Messi Basa chiefs at war over Neymar. Nima believes he can join Basa for 470 million uh, euros. Those guys make a lot of money. I wish, I wish I'm a sports person. And then on the final paper for review is the complete sports. And Tammy Abraham urged to ignore Nigeria on the front page. Ndidi drops to the fifth. Uh, Eagles star 11 points off top, uh, top sport. And then we have... Osimen set for UCL debut Vax V vs Ajax. Please find out what this is about again on Complete Sports as displayed there on your screen. Are you a sports fan? Yeah, I'm a football which, fan. Which, I'm a sport. So what are you with? Just tell me some things here before we wrap up very quickly. Okay, on the, the Neymar Barcelona. Why are you not sign? talking about the investigation? Okay, so let's talk no, about I, 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 <laughs> Okay. The Neymar the Barcelona, Barcelona, Barcelona saga, it won't go away, it will stay with them because he wants to come. And the Barcelona is not willing to pay what PSG is offering. Mm -hmm. The EFCC issue is with FIFA and, and NFF, mm -hmm. uh, some huge amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. So, so EFCC you, has to investigate. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you agree with me that those guys need to clean up their names also yes. so that we yeah. know where finances and uh, harmonies are going to. 
And that will be it on Off the Press uh, this morning. Thank you for being with me and thank you very much, Dr. Ido, uh, for coming this morning and dissecting uh, the newspapers and the, the things that matter to us as a nation and, of course, out of this nation. Again, we'll do this tomorrow, uh, same time, 8.30 here on Plus TV Africa uh, on the program Off the Press. And I remain Amaka Ukoi.